coming up on City Spotlight. We head west to Taylorville for an on-location episode. Taylorville Mayor Bruce Berry and Patty Hornbuckle of the Greater Taylorville Chamber of Commerce with the latest on the new water treatment plant, the new industrial park, and the latest new economic development in Taylorville. Plus, a recap and feature of the 34th Taylorville Chili Fest. We're on location and we're talking all about Taylorville here on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. And welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are on location once again here in Season 6, and we have made our way back to Taylorville here in Christian County. We're going to talk in this uh, first segment here with the Mayor of Taylorville, Bruce Berry. Bruce, great to see you again. Thanks for having me. And great as always, see you. very good. And Patty Hornbuckle of the Greater Taylorville Chamber of Commerce. Patty, always a pleasure. Thank you. Great to be here in Taylorville. We are taping this segment on October 15th. I was here 10 days ago, taped a segment on Chili Fest. Look forward to sharing that with you guys at the end of the program. And we'll talk with Bruce and Patty about uh, how it all went from their perspective. But first off, let's recap a few things that we talked about last time. Uh, the last time we talked with you guys was February of 2018, so a little ways ago. Um, latest, Bruce, on the uh, water treatment plant. The water treatment plant is up and running right now. We're uh, distributing water, and uh, everyone seems to be very excited. A project long, long overdue. Long took overdue. Took a while to go. Took a while, and uh, we're just now uh, periodically uh, distributing water to our customers through it. The previous facility, if I read, uh, it's nearly 70 years in operation, so uh, this is a long time coming for Taylorville to right. have a new facility that's state-of-the-art. Exactly, and in the near future, we'll be tearing down the old facility, and uh, hopefully we can come up with a plan for that area also. All right, very good. So the new one, again, is across from the old one there here in Taylorville. Very right. good. Industrial Park, what can you tell us about that here as we tape here at the end of 2019? Well, we, we plan on breaking ground sometime in the spring of 2020, I imagine probably March or April, and things are going well there, and we just really can't wait to break ground there, and hopefully we can get some uh, industrial customers out in our new industrial park. And again, that's off of uh, Route 29 on Route, your way out of town, right, going uh, towards Springfield. Just north of Walmart there on Route 29, mm -hmm. and 100, 100 and some acres, I believe, out there, and uh, we're so, developing the industrial park out in that area. I've videotaped uh, several times there. It's just a big plot of land there, but hopefully soon we won't be... <laughs> correct, you know, correct. You just we're, uh, we're trying to get the IEPA <laughs> permits and everything now, and mm -hmm. like I said, hopefully we'll break ground in the spring of 2020. Fantastic. Also, you guys talked briefly about was in development at the time, TIF District 1. TIF District 1, we did develop that out in the Route 29 area, 104. Uh, we've got two businesses already taking advantage of the TIF eligible cost. Uh, the new Steak and Shake's been open about six months now. Mm -hmm. And we got a new medical facility, HSHS, moved out there. Mm -hmm. Brought home a, a hometown doctor, and the, the town wow. seems to be excited about inviting Dr. Rick Del Valley back to our community. And uh, it seems to be there's optimism out in that area and hopefully we'll get a few more businesses, we'll develop that area. And uh, Taylor's on the upswing, I hope. Very good, and, and that restaurant that you guys teased last time ended up being Steak and Shake, so glad, <laughs> glad to hear the name that came, came about. The Greenhouse, we also talked about the Greenhouse last time, a 24 hour operation there and it Seems to be doing well as well. Yeah, hydroponic greenhouse out on 104 near the landfill, and they've been open eight or nine months, That's I believe, and uh, wow. seems to be doing well. They employ around 25 to 30 people, and uh, any addition out that area is a great addition for not only our community, but for the county as a whole. Okay, very good. Checked all the things that wanted to follow <laughs> up on, so let's talk about the new things or things that have transpired here in 2019. 
Patty, you have a list there of some of the newer economic development in the community. I do. Get us caught up, please. Well, the, the square is really starting to be revitalized, and that's that's exciting to you know anybody that lives here. You know, but of course, economic development too. Um, we have a new restaurant on the square, Kluge's on the square. Um, he's open for business. Kitchen's not quite ready, but it'll be a steakhouse, which will, will be a great addition to the to the square. Um, we have Rosati's Pizza. Wow. You know, that's and that's right next to our chamber office, which <laughs> is not very convenient as far as the smell because it's just delicious it's just we're happy to have them um, we have a couple of bakeries Talia's bakery is opened um, and when I describe all these businesses too they've all renovated the buildings that they're in uh, a lot of them are down to exposed brick which makes them so so homey is you know even just something like Wade Turnery State Farm Insurance you know they've got that building just I mean it's just it's so natural and so um, historic that you know that's the kind of the, the theme we like to have but uh, um, like I said, and we're obviously happy to have HSHS out on the on right. the north side. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Gordman's moved wow. to town, so we're happy to have them. So there's a name. There's a name. People, there, people you know from other communities. People in the recognize. Area. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, we've got a lot of in construction. You know, they're in construction Very phase. Nice. Very nice. Um, we have Family Traditions Bakery, which is here on the square. Um, she's partnering up with uh, uh, Alyssa Mashad with Chef Shadi, so another place to eat on the square. Wow. Um, Keegan's Castle. Which they're they're renovating one of the buildings on the square for um, bounce houses inside, okay. and then also to rent them you know rent them out on the weekend. Um, we have a pawn shop, which is going in, and that's a historical story too. Okay. It's somebody that used to own the pawn shop moved away, um, had a death in the family, got it back, and he's going to renovate and, and bring all that back. Um, we have a wood shop that's going uh, just a block off the square. Wow. Very, very <laughs> neat, you know, um, personalized, customized um, furniture building. And uh, so we're, we're happy to have that. And of course the hospital, you know, that anytime that that, that happens, it, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to attract business when we have businesses already here in, in town. So it's just, uh, it's, it's, they're all good. So you have established and you have new things coming, Bruce. I hear a lot. I hear. I think every other one of those businesses she listed on the square. A lot of that, and it's because we developed a business development district, which our square encompasses, and and also they're using money that we've raised through the business development tax, and a lot of them are taking advantage of that. We'd like to get our square back to it was 30, 40 years ago, where it was vibrant. It was the place to go, and and we're in the process of doing that. Excellent. And Patty, you mentioned, and Bruce, the medical care is obviously uh, av very available in Taylorville. Right. The hospital's a $60 million new hospital, and uh, can't get any better care in a rural area than you can right here in Taylorville. Not many communities can say they have a hospital of, of this size. Uh, congratulations to Taylorville on, on your available medical care. Um, Public works, what can you tell us about mm -hmm. uh, any notable public works that well, transpired like in 2019? Well, like we're just finishing the new water plant. It's right. up and running, and uh, we're in the process of uh, repairing streets, repaving streets, especially the ones that are leading to our downtown area. Okay. In the next spring, we will start repaving East Main Cross, and okay. so it will come from 29 all the way to Walnut Street, mm -hmm. uh, one of our major roadways leading to our square. Right. And that's, I think, the main objective is to try to improve the entrance routes to our square. Mm -hmm. And then our other projects will be out in the Northwest Corridor where the TIF District and also the BDD is available. We hope to uh, build some roads out in that area and right. uh, attract no more businesses out in that area. Obviously, yeah, you'll need more roads if you build a big <laughs> industrial park That's out there. Right. Very good. Uh, you've had some uh, new people in some major leadership positions in the community. You have a new superintendent of schools in Taylorville. You have a new police chief, and you're also, as of right now, looking for a new We're fire chief. We're looking for a new fire chief right now. I, I think I uh, hit the uh, hit the jackpot when I hired the new police chief. Chief Wheeler's doing an excellent job, and I just want to commend the school board on excellent choice. Dr. Chris Doherty is an excellent superintendent, and she replaced a good superintendent, but there's really an optimism out in the school area and also in the downtown area. All right, excellent. 
Uh, before we hit up on Chili Fest, I want to leave some time <laughs> to talk with you guys about that. Uh, last time we talked with you guys, Patty, you were in the middle of the LEAD program, but you're on the cusp of it now with your energy that you gave toward Chili Fest. Now your focus leads toward the LEAD program. Yeah. And coming up is the 14th year of that. Tell us about that, please. Well, the LEAD program is a 12-week uh, leadership course um, that we offer to any age. We've had uh, high school graduates you know, come straight out of high school and take the, take the program, and we had somebody turn 90 in the program. So it's open to everybody. Um, if there's anything that you ever wanted to know about Christian County, um, you know, whether it be, you know, tours of businesses, um, you know, leadership programs, um, how things work in the county, um, then, then, you know, we would love to have you. And like I said, we meet Wednesday afternoons from 1 until 4. Uh, we do have uh, two days where we have full days where we have the very first day is a personality you know, everybody kind of get to know each other. And then the second time that we meet for a full day, we go up to Springfield to the Capitol building and uh, meet with our legislators. And uh, we learn all, all about lobbying and, and, and things like that. So a uh, great, great group of people. Like I said, it's our 14th year. Mm -hmm. um, we have a list of, of attendees that have t attended by business. Wow. And so when you look at that list, it shows how important that the businesses think that this program is. And, uh, and our best advocates are the ones that have gone through the program. So we, we love our LEAD program. Excellent. Coming up at the start of 2020. Yes. The new, new decade is upon us. All right, the 34th Chili Fest took place on October 5th and 6th. I uh, was fortunate to come by uh, myself. This is the second time City Spotlight has covered Chili Fest. Uh, I was here for five hours on that beautiful Saturday. The weather was excellent, so that's always a good thing. Yes. Um, and wow, the, the turnout, I don't know how many spectators, people you had travel in, but uh, I was certainly able to experience uh, talking uh, with some of the chili makers. I think I talked to about roughly a third of them. I don't know the official numbers of chili makers there were, but I talked to six of them from four different states. And I obviously, chili and camaraderie. Um, what a combination. Talk about your impressions of the 34th Chili Fest. Well, Patty's done such an excellent <laughs> job in increasing the uh, visibility of Chili Fest. I just commend her for an excellent job. I think it is the 34th year 34th. of Chili Fest, and it seems to be improving each year, and I'm just glad to be a, a little bit of a part of it. I worked in the chili tent for six hours that day. <laughs> I did see you, and, yes, uh, working hard. I enjoyed it. I mean, it's you know, you get to see the people and everyone, and what a turnout, so all the, all the accolades go to Patty Hornbuckle oh, no. on that. And, and I'll back that up too. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm just one person and I have a committee that would just knock your socks off. Um, they have a responsibility and they do what they're supposed to do or do what they want to do. They're all volunteers um, and they love what they do. So each individual, you know, chairman of each committee itself, um, like I said, they, they, they do it and they know what needs to be done and they do it. So it's, it works. Obviously, a lot of vendors as well. And if I overheard correctly from Randy Miller, who was uh, emceeing the uh, the pageant, a uh, record number of uh, queens showed up for the pageant. It was a, obviously a great turnout there. Uh, wow, the pageant was beautiful as well. And some things that we you know kind of turned around. We have Brittany Moore, which is our pageant director, and uh, and she's you know all into pageant. She's been in them. She's run them, um, and she's just she's just very confident in what she does. Um, and she asked this year if we could move the pageant from nine o'clock and, and move it to noon, and like. Sure, you know, why not? You know, there's a, several reasons behind her, you know, her asking, and it was brilliant. You know, we, we should have moved it years ago because, like I said, it just made everything flow a lot, a lot easier. Uh, we opened up a new um, category in the, in the, you know, for Teen Miss and opened up for more, more pageants to enter. And, uh, and like I said, we had record number of entries. And the weather was certainly beautiful for the majority of the time that the pageant was <laughs> And that up. helps a lot. Yes. Excellent. Uh, and again, the, the number of people you come for the chili making. Uh, and I heard some great comments from several of them that you'll hear here in the feature coming up, very colorful feature. Um, some of them have been coming for 20 years. Correct. Some have been coming for one, two, three, four, five years. And the wonderful things they said about the square and the location that has to you know, feedback from the people that are hardworking chili right. makers. It, it makes our square, it's a beautiful weekend for that and we're trying to emphasize our square and some of the improvements that the square is partaking in the last year or so. And so hopefully next year will be a better and bigger background and 
I haven't talked with Patty with this for a while, but maybe we can develop it into maybe some nighttime activities on that Saturday evening in the future. I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> so again, we're taping here ten day, nine, ten days after Chili Fest has, has finished, uh, come and gone. Uh, how long do you wait before you start planning for next year? Well, we usually like to let a little time go, <laughs> just for the fact that it takes us, you, you, you've been in the office, it's still pretty chilly fest looking um, to get things cleaned up. Uh, we did have a short wrap up meeting just this Sunday, um, just you know, kind of throw in some ideas around, but we'll have a, a wrap up meeting in the next couple weeks. And then I usually like to wait till about February to, to start them all again, so just to kind of keep everybody fresh. So we'll meet once a month, you know, until it gets a little bit closer and then we'll hit it hard again. Uh, Overall, very much a success. Very Every, much a success. Everything, everything went very well. It did. Very you know, successful. Couple, couple hiccups now and then that nobody would ever know, and it just went seamlessly. So we're, I'm very proud of my volunteers. It takes about 300 volunteers to make this happen. Yes. And uh, and without those people or those volunteer chair people, nothing happens. So, you know, very very appreciative to that. All four sides of the square were were jam packed, whether with the pageant. Chili makers. There was music. I think I saw some magic acts on Kid one. Zone. Yes. Kid Zone. Yes. Big good. event Sunday was the Kid Tractor Pull, oh. and that was always draws a big, big I, huge I crowd for that. Huge crowd for that, and uh, something that we need to bring back every year, and I'm sure we will. And we, yep, it's been. I'm not even sure how many, how long it's been coming. I'm, this is his brother Larry, right. <laughs> so, yeah. and uh, and appreciate everything that he does for Chili Fest and and for the for the community. One more question about Chili Fest before we, we move on here. Uh, again, both of you have been a part of the community for a while, and uh, this is a tra obviously a tradition, 30 plus years. Um, could we emphasize to our audience at home just how, it, how, how big of a thing this is for Taylor every year? The community coming together. You know, we had a little bit of a hiccup a year ago with the tornado, and this was a great outcoming from, of the community just to say, hey, we're back for business and we're gonna support our community as they've shown throughout the last 10 months recovering from the tornado and everything's really really up and coming right now. So we're very optimistic about what, what holds for Taylorville in the future. Excellent event here in the latter part of 2019. Patty, I, I saw you right before, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but right, <laughs> be, right before uh, Mayor Barry introduced the crowd, I saw you get a little choked up there before and I didn't get that on camera because that's, that's, that's... Not, not what it was, but. Um, you've put a lot of work into this, and it has been somewhat of a trying year for Taylorville. Um, your, your emotions uh, about what, what, what they, was they, going on? They, they kind of came out, didn't they? <laughs> and, you know, it was just, you know, when it all just kind of comes to a head and, and you see success and you see, you know, part of me was I look out and from my office and I can see all these people and I could, everybody was smiling. That's all I wanted to see. You know, everybody was happy. It was all, you know, it was all good. And I just, like I said, it got, got choked up and it just was a feeling of pride. Excellent. And uh, kudos to you guys for enduring through a, a tough year and, and put on a great Chili Fest. I had a wonderful time. And again, I look forward to sharing the colorful pictures uh, of not only the chili, but the pageant with our viewers at home. Any final comments as we wrap up here? Excited for the new decade? I'm, I'm very excited for the new decade and <laughs> see what this will bring for Taylorville. You know, we'll get us a new fire chief. we got a new police chief, new street superintendent, new uh, lake superintendent. So Taylorville's open for business. I invite everyone to come visit us. And thank you for spotlighting us again. Uh, we really appreciate what you do for our community. And... Uh, like I said, come and visit Taylorville, and maybe it is a great place to live. It's certainly the worthwhile trip, nearly an hour and a half, as you guys have made a couple of times over to Charleston, but yeah. look, love coming on location and taping here. Patty, your thoughts as we move into a new decade here in Taylorville? Well, I could just repeat what he just said, too, because like I said, he just said it, um, it, it comes from the heart. You know, we love Taylorville, and uh, we're proud of it. Uh, we're proud of its citizens, and, uh, and like I said, there's just good things to come. So we're, we're, we're on an up roll. Excellent. As we uh, have caught up here on Taylorville here in October of 2019, we thank the time of the mayor of Taylorville, Bruce Berry. Thank you. And Patty Hornbuckle of the Greater Taylorville Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you guys on here on City Spotlight again. Right, thanks. And coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll have some sights and sounds from the 34th Chili Fest. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Taylorville.
ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The clock on the court, courthouse tower has struck nine, and that means it is time to begin the 2019 Greater Taylorville Chamber of Commerce Chili Fest. Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of the city of Taylorville, Bruce Berry. Thank you. Thank you for showing up here. If we are, Taylorville is the chili capital of the world. I want to thank all the chili cooks off the that made the long trip to Taylorville. The bags term will start in a couple hours. We have the Queen's Contest. I know the girls are all excited about who's going to be Miss Chili Pepper 2019. Important to get them as sm small as possible. Yeah, well, this is going to be for uh, my Verde, so it's going to kind of dissolve itself into it. And is that the first step in the process? Yes, it is. What are you adding here? Uh, Taco Bell Salsa Verde. I just pre-mix all this stuff and then I'm just going to let it sit until I get ready to start cooking. Get ahead of the game a little bit. How long have you been making chili, sir? Um, this is starting my sixth season. So I'm kind of a rookie to this game compared to most of these people. What do you enjoy most about making chili? Hanging out with my friends. <laughs> No, I, I, I enjoy chili, and I just, uh, a lot of great people I've met doing this. I just enjoy hanging out. So it's not just uh, the making of the food, but it's the camaraderie? And, yeah, and meeting it is. It's like, a, it's like an extended family. I mean, a lot of these people, are, you know, we've got people here from Michigan, Texas, um, Missouri, you know, so they, Wisconsin. So they come from all over the place, and you just get to be good friends. We'll check on Bullion Cube. Throw that right in there. How many chilies are you making? I'm making uh, vegetarian and bear day today. Then tomorrow I'll be cooking red chili and homestyle chili. What are the challenges of making multiple chilies at once? <laughs> Getting confused. <laughs> 34 plus years later, this event continues to be an International Chili Society sanctioned chili cook-off for two days, both days Saturday and Sunday, as well as the Chamber continues to cook chili, sell it. It's one of the biggest fundraisers of the year for the Chamber. And then around that, we have all these vendors and all this entertainment. The flavor wins everything. Where are you from, sir? I'm actually from um, Crowley, Texas. All the way from Texas to Taylorville, Illinois. 803 miles. Not, two stops for gas, and that was it. Wow. Not Proud to be here. Have you been here before? Oh, every year. For the last five years. So what brings you from Texas all this way for the last however many years? The last five years? Yeah. Because it's, it's a wonderful event. The community's great to everybody. Diane Lentz here. She's our reigning uh, world champion in red chili. Um, Tom Coward putting on. He's a world champion this year in green. Lloyd Weir down here. He's the world champion in homestyle chili. And I got the honors of veggie chili. Yes. So all four world champions are present here today. It's never happened in a chili competition. You seem to know everyone. I do. It's, it's one big family. The chili family, we travel far. I mean, it's done far. We know everyone like kind of a family reunion it is. And Taylorville is one of our reunion stops. It's, it's about the love of each other. We help each other. Um, none of us is doing anything different really that much than anyone else. Again, it's just what flavor it is and the cooking technique what makes it. Then the day, a winner from a loser, you know. But someone has to win, someone has to lose. But it, it's it's a great time. You know, you eat first with your eyes, and then Henry, you remember that you eat first with your eyes too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For those out there that Unfortunately, people do, but I don't think that's fair <laughs> until you put the actual taste bud on it. Right. You just said a pretty cool expression there. You. Eat first with your eyes. Uh, tell, tell us what's what's the magic behind that that comment there. I mean, uh, what does that mean? Well, to me, I mean, food has to look good, and then you know, makes you want it more, and so then you taste it, and mm -hmm, if it tastes good too, you've got you've got a good combination there. So the words of a champion. Very good. Is this your first time, or have you been no, here many years? We've been here many years, almost every year. Yeah. Ask the gentleman to your left what what brings you back every year, all, all these years. 
the camaraderie is one. And uh, I mean, it's just the, the public. I mean, it's, it's a nice cook-off, well-organized. People are friendly, the public. So, hey, that's it. If you get a whiff of that, you can smell the lemon in it. Well, this is a vegetarian uh, chili. I've just started it. And I have some sweet potato, onion, red, uh, bell pepper, orange and yellow bell pepper. I have some fresh jalapeno in there, some chili powder and some cumin. And what do you enjoy about making chili? Um, well, we like chili, but it's really the camaraderie of all of the chili cooks. Um, in my opinion, that's what is really fun. Plus, you're outside, you're talking to the public, you're talking to people who really love chili. I love this setting or contest. Uh, it's in Michigan, there's very few uh, towns and everything that has a square like this. How many times have you been here to Taylorville? 20. Like something it? like that. Come to this one every year. <laughs> it's just the broth so far. <laughs> Veggies will go in next. I have yet to win yet. I'm trying. I'm surrounded by all winners around here. But you but you enjoy the camaraderie also. Oh yeah, I see these people more than I see my relatives. <laughs> what, do you, what do you enjoy about making chili? Really the, the people. It's, it's just um, the people that come and eat the chili and people that cook the chili. It's just wonderful. Finished product. Finished. Does it look like Finished. a winner to you? Tastes good. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. How we do? Uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, that, did I tell you this is chicken chili? All right, all right, all right, Flavor Town. I gotta make sure I've got 13 chilies before we move this table. Flavor Town, okay. Three, got six, nine, 12, 13. Thank you. Ta -da. Jacob enjoys tumbling and swimming, and when he grows up, he wants to be a firefighter. This is contestant number seven, Jacob Smith. This event left the square for a while, and it struggled, to be quite honest with you. But when it came back to the square, 01, 02, somewhere in there, it just flourished, just, just exploded. And uh, we continue to see that uh, response to Chili Fest uh, since moving it back to the square almost 20 years ago. Contestant number three is Camry Phillips. It's a signature event for the town. It's a signature event for the chamber. It's a great way to bring people to Taylorville that way as well. And when you get 10 to 15,000 people here in two days, that's a successful event for Taylorville. Here's our Junior Miss Chili Pepper 2019 is contestant number 14, Julie Wayman. City Spotlight making its second ever trip to Taylorville Chili Fest, the 34th edition this year, as we tape here in downtown Taylorville on October 5th. Thousands of people, the pageant, and of course we were able to talk to six chili makers from across the United States. We love it. And Taylorville's good to all of us. All of us, thank you Taylorville. We'll see you all next year. And that'll do it for another On Location episode here on City Spotlight in Season 6. We've been taping an On Location episode here in Taylorville. We thank you for watching City Spotlight, and we'll see you next time. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.